Evangelistic Outreach Ministries presents the 21st edition of the Spring Jubilee, May 15th through the 19th at the Scioto County Fairgrounds in Lucasville, Ohio. Host evangelist Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Baer will welcome the McCameys on Monday. Tuesday is Patriotic Night with Karen Peck in New River. The Primitives on Wednesday. Mike Blanton and Evidence on Thursday. And a special Youth Night with C.T. and Becky Townsend on Friday. Service time is 7 p.m. For more information, call 800-767-8713 or visit CalvinEvans.org. Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. What a blessing to be able to share the program with you today. God has been doing so many wonderful things for the ministry, and we're glad that we're able to go out in meetings and then be able to share those services with you. I received a letter from a dear friend the other day. She was telling me in that letter how much she wishes that she was able physically to get to church she's just not able to and what the program means to her. We receive thousands of letters and emails and calls like that every month into the ministry and I pray today that this program will be an encouragement to you. We always like to start things off in prayer so join me as I pray today. Father, I thank you so much for giving us this privilege again to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with those that have tuned into the program. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for opening the doors and allowing us to be here. These are challenging times, but you've continued to meet the needs, and Lord, you've continued to supply the funds to keep us on this station, and I thank you for that. We're dependent on you for everything, and I ask especially that during these 30 minutes today, it'll be a time of refreshing and rejoicing to those that are able to share worship with us because we lift you up and we worship you. Things can go on without us, but Lord, without you, nothing is possible. So we need you. I need your blessings today, your guidance. I pray that you'll continue to touch the hearts of those that are shut in. And especially, I pray for those that are unsaved, those that need to confess Christ as their Savior. Lord, I ask that today you'll use the songs, you'll use the message as a means to touch their heart and that conviction will come upon them to the place that they'll surrender to you and confess their sin and repent of their sin and that they can receive salvation, a full pardon that was paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Use us now for your glory. Help us, I pray today. And for everything that you do, I'll thank you. For I ask it in Jesus' name and amen. Well, let's start things off with this song. For Jesus is coming, Jesus, Jesus is coming, coming to, to, take take us home, to take us home. By His blood He has bought me, His blood has bought and me. His word He has taught me, His word has taught me. He didn't stay dead, he didn't stay dead and He won't stay gone. Bible we're told oh that he surely shall come Amen. like a thief in the night with the trump of God and the king of all kings who paid the call didn't stay dead and he won't stay To take us home By His blood He has bought me His blood has bought me And His word He has taught me His word has taught me He didn't stay dead He didn't stay dead And He won't stay gone He didn't stay dead 
and he won't stay gone, won't stay gone. He didn't stay dead, he didn't stay dead. and he won't stay gone. For Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming to take us home. By his blood he has bought me. His blood has bought me. And his word he has taught me. His word has taught me. He didn't stay dead. And he won't stay gone. He didn't stay dead. And he won't stay gone. Won't stay gone. Today we're coming to you from the sanctuary of the church that the Lord has allowed Brian and I to minister in. I serve as pastor here at Rubyville and Brian is the associate and for many, many years now we've been blessed to work with these great, great people and the great passion they have to reach out to others. And we are able to share the message each week because of churches just like this church. Not because it's the church that we minister in, it's just that it takes a lot of churches to help us continue to reach out with the gospel message and to support the missions project that this ministry is based on. For over 60 years now, this ministry has been touching lives. It all started when dad was holding an extended revival meeting and out of that revival meeting, they, they received a love offering for him. After some six weeks of revival, the offering amounted to $250. And instead of keeping that money, Dad felt led of the Lord to be able to purchase time on a radio station. It wasn't long until he was purchasing time then on television stations. And then he took his first mission trip and it opened up the door for missions ministry for this ministry. And how God has blessed that vision through all of these years. I thank you, I thank your church for standing together with us. And I do need to tell you that we are in a tremendous struggle right now. I pray that we'll be able to carry on on all the stations that we're currently on without having to cut some of the programming, but we need your help. We need you to rally to the calls. Your gifts are important. I would hate to think that we'd have to curtail missions ministry or curtail reaching people here in America with free gift offers or to even cut out being on the station that maybe you're viewing right now. But we need to know, first of all, that you're there. Whether you can send a gift or not, we need to hear from you today. It's important you take the time to let us hear from you. And then with the upcoming meetings that we have, it is extremely important that we hear from you. We have meetings like the Spring Jubilee coming up in just a little over a week now. Meetings like that can only carry on as we raise the funds. It's too much of a financial burden to beg for money during the services. That would be offensive to unsaved people. So I'm counting on you. Many of you are shut in, unable to get out, but you enjoy when we're able to bring those services to you. It's expensive to be able to record those services and be able to get them out and then purchase the television time. You see, we're not on television for free. This time that you're now viewing with us and sharing with us, it costs money to be on this station. And that's why it's important that you send the best gift that you can. So I hope that you'll rally to the calls. Send the best gift you possibly can. Our mailing address is 299 Ohio Avenue. New Boston, Ohio, 45662. Or you can even call the office and by phone be able to give your gift, 800-767-8713. Or you can always donate securely at our website at calvinevans.org. We do need to hear from you today. And we must raise additional gifts. I heard from a pastor just before coming to put these programs together. And he said their church was receiving an offering to help with the Spring Jubilee expenses. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, churches, for rallying to this cause. I hope that we'll hear from you this week. We do have some great services coming up. If you're viewing the program on Sunday, this evening at 6 o'clock, I'll be preaching at the Hayden Enterprise Baptist Church at 6 o'clock in Hilliard, Ohio, where the pastor is Bill Webb. God has blessed us with a great friendship there 
there now with this church for more than 36 years. I've been a dear friend to these folks and I hope you'll help us pack out the sanctuary there in the Columbus, Ohio area tonight at seven o'clock. And then on this coming Tuesday evening at seven o'clock, I'll be at the Monclo Free Will Baptist Church at, at Sharpless, West Virginia. I hope you'll come and be with us. Joe Lane is a great pastor there. They always receive us with love and warmth there. This coming Tuesday evening, I hope you'll rally to help us pack out the sanctuary there at the Monclo Free Will Baptist Church. And then the great meeting, the Spring Jubilee that's coming up. We're just a little over a week away. It'll start on the 15th of May, run through the 19th at the Soda County Fairgrounds at Lucasville, Ohio. That's right off of US 23. Great singers will be in with us on Monday, the McCameys. Tuesday night, Karen Peck and New River will be there with us. Wednesday night, the Primitives. On Thursday night, Mike Blanton and Evidence. And Friday night, CT and Becky Townsend will be in to sing. We're going to have a hallelujah meeting seven o'clock each evening. And I hope that you'll make your plans on joining us. Admission is free and we're looking for God to do great, great things at the Spring Jubilee this year. I appreciate you. We've never needed you more than we need you right now. So I hope you'll pray for us and let us know whether you can give a gift or not. It's important that we know that you're tuned into the program, that you're hearing the message that's going out and the music that's going out. So take the time to contact us this week. Rally, rally behind us. Pray for us and lift our arms up. God bless you. Let's join the message today. I'm looking at a subject tonight entitled, Just Like John, Just Like John. Out of the Revelation, I'm gonna read just a few verses to you tonight. In Revelation chapter one, if you'll stand together, I'll read these verses to you. If you don't have your Bible, listen closely. I'll show you what I'm reading is from the Word of God. It's His Word, anointed by Him. And let's look for just a few moments at the subject, Just Like John. There are some things that you and I may go through just like John. But God has promised his faithfulness to us when we go through those things. Revelation 1.1, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We could stop right there and shout it out. If it's about Jesus, we wanna hear about it. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, mark that word John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Amen. Look down in verse nine. And I, John, there it is again. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. I'll stop reading there. You can be seated if you'd like as we think for just a few moments on this subject, just like John. I think uh, that, that, you know, sometimes we need to grasp what is taking place when a writer has penned the word of God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And this is one of those unusual accounts. You know, we, we can't really go into detail why John is where he's at from the Bible. But yet, we know that history and church history has taught us some things about John. For example, uh, we know with those that follow the Lord, the disciples, he called them to be disciples. And then not only did he call them to be disciples, but he sent them out as the apostles. And when they went out with the message, it wasn't long until people were angered at the message of Jesus Christ. 
and they started martyring them for their testimony of Christ. You know the word martyr means witness. And when they were a witness, it cost them their life to witness for Jesus Christ. We don't know what we're gonna have to go through before we leave here to be able to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Now, we talk about persecution, but we don't know a lot about persecution, really. Most people think persecution is when somebody didn't shake their hand at church. Or they think persecution is uh, when they're maybe, maybe that. I had a lady one time, she called me up and said, I need to meet with you. Preacher, I'm really, I'm really concerned. My husband and I, we need to meet with you, it's urgent. And I said, well, what's the problem when we got together? She said, well, our checking account fell below $100,000. And she said, we're a nervous wreck. She thought that was persecution. I wanted to tell her, you're living in the promised land where I come from. But we misunderstand persecution. See, it costs them their life. Their life. Now, we know there's only a few accounts of what happened to those apostles in scripture. But we know from church history With the exception of John, they were all martyred for the cause of Christ. And ever since that time, Christians have been martyred. You know, during the dark ages, 50 million people were killed for serving Jesus Christ. 50 million people gave their life. China, when it was overthrown by communism, it's estimated that over one million Christians had to give their life for the cause of Christ when China was overtaken by communism. And now here we have John, and many say, well, John's the only one that died of natural causes. Well, we know that John was uh, supposed to be martyred. Let me put it that way. We have to read the writings of Tertullian that said that John, they decided to bring him before a gate. And there Domitian, the emperor, had a large pot of oil that was boiling. And they said to John, for you to recant of the gospel of Jesus Christ and deny Jesus as the Lord because they wanted Caesar to be Lord, the emperor to be Lord. They didn't want Christ to be Lord and said, if you don't deny that, we're going to put you in that pot of boiling water. Do you know what John in history is recorded to have done? History says that John, instead of recanting, started preaching about Jesus Christ. And as they preached about Christ and others joined in in praise as he preached about Jesus Christ, they put him in that pot of oil. But his preaching was hotter than the oil. Because when they brought him out, he was unharmed. Didn't have a burn on him, didn't have a scar on him. (laughs) The Lord preserved him. Why? Because God wasn't finished with the book yet. The revelation was yet to be written. Well, the Romans had a rule of double jeopardy. They couldn't try you twice for the same crime. So they couldn't put him back in and take his life some other way. So what they decided to do was to exile him to the Isle of Patmos. And that's where this record is being recorded for us from the word of God. And he states the fact that this came to him on the Isle of Patmos. Now, when he's on that Isle of Patmos, we learn several things. They banished him there because they didn't want him to have exposure to others. They thought if we put him somewhere where he can't preach to others, he'll never further the church of the living God or the message of Jesus Christ. Hey, the world will try to shut us up. They wanna stop the message, but you hear me. You cannot stop the fact that Jesus died for the sins of the world, that he was born of a virgin, and he hung on a cross and gave his life and his blood that we might be saved, was buried and on the third day rose again, and Jesus is coming again. You can't stop that message. Patmos was that place where John was banished, and just like John, you may be banished cut off, isolated from everyone. Patmos was 40 miles out in the sea from Ephesus. They vary on records as to how big it was, probably 10 miles long and six miles wide. And it came up out of the sea, hills that were over a thousand feet in height, solid rock, just rising out of the ocean. Isolated by, by sharks, impossible to swim back to shore nowhere to turn to, nowhere to go, banished and left all alone, just like John. 
you may be banished and you may be isolated and you may feel like you're all alone, but may I remind you, just like John, you may be banished, but you're never so isolated that God can't come to you and the Lord doesn't know where you are. I don't care where you go, God knows you're there and God knows your need and God is able to come to you no matter where you're at, how isolated, how alone you feel, how you feel like everyone has cut you out and turned you away and nobody understands you. I don't care how alone you feel tonight, God is able to come to you in the middle of your isolation and there show himself to you just like John. That's a blessed promise because we get to the place sometimes where we feel like we're all alone and nobody understands and nobody can come to us. The psalmist put it this way, though I take the wings of the morning, thou art there. If I go into the uttermost parts of the sea, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. There's no place you're at that Jesus can't come to you. And by the way, if you're lost, I don't care how far you are from the Father, Jesus can come to you tonight. How far you've gone in your sins, the Lord can come to where you're at and save your soul. I heard the testimony of a man on Friday night that stood up and he said, most of you folks, wouldn't have liked me if you would have known me before I met Jesus. And he said, I sometimes have to stand up and remind people. He said, do you know where I met Jesus? I was in a jail cell all alone and nobody was there and no chaplain could get to me, no attorney could get to me. Said, but my mother had prayed for me and prayed for me and I thought I'm gonna cry out to Jesus. He said, that's been over seven years ago and I've never done drugs. I've never stolen a thing. My life has been turned around because Jesus came to where I am and he can come to you. I don't care how alone you are. Jesus can come to you. You could be at a place tonight where you feel like you're in the middle of hundreds of people but still you're all alone. I know pastors that stand in the pulpit and preach to hundreds and hundreds of of people every week, preachers, Preachers that love God, but the devil will isolate them and say you're all alone. I know singers that stand and sing with the power of God on them, that when they get in their vehicle to travel to their next appointment, the devil climbs on their shoulder and says you're killing yourself for no reason. You're running up and down these roads and it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter if it's the darkness of the night, if it's a hospital room, if you're isolated in your home or shut in, God can come to where we're at and meet us there. You're never so banished that God can't get to you. They put him there to bind him, to bind his mind. Hopes of him going insane, being isolated. But the strangest thing, he makes a statement in this. He said, it's the Lord's day and I was in the spirit of the Lord. What's that mean? They tried to bind him, but when are we gonna learn? You can't bind the spirit of God. You can't put the Holy Ghost in shackles and chains. You can't tell the spirit of God what to do and what not to do. Oh, I know you can grieve him, but still, the Lord has a way of coming to us in the spirit. When we get in the spirit, there's nothing that can bind us. I think that you'll agree with that. There's a liberty that's there. There's four times in the book of the Revelation that you'll read the phrase, in the spirit. All four times mark a major division in the book of the Revelation. On this first time, it was different from the other three. On the first time, here was John banished all alone but it was the Lord's day and he's in the spirit of the Lord and he said suddenly he came to me I fell as though I was dead I saw him his eyes burning his hair as white as wool his garment as white
white as snow. And when he spoke, it was the voice of many, many waters. And he said, John, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You talk about heaven, church. Nobody else was there. Nobody to sing. Nobody to sing. make up a choir. Nobody to testify. But the Spirit of the Lord was there. And Jesus was there. That's all it takes to have church. This time it was different than the other three. This time when John was in the spirit, Christ came to him. The other three times, the Lord says, come up hither. (laughs) Why? Because he said, John, the view's better from up here. You get to see things from my point of view here. You're down now and you see it from your point. I came to you when you were feeling that way, but now John, come up hither and I'm going to show you the things that shall come to pass shortly. I'm gonna let you see the things that people will go through, but John, I'll not leave you without hope. I am the one that has come to break the seals of the book. I am the one that has come to deliver the earth from the curse that's upon it. John, I am the one that has come to prepare for you a wonderful place that you're going to see with your own eyes, John, a wonderful place called heaven, a new heaven, a new earth as a bride adorned for a husband uh, coming down from God out of heaven above. John, I'm gonna let you see it. Well, thank you again for taking the time to join us today. And we know that uh, you've given us your most valuable possession and that is your time to join us. And you will never know how much we appreciate that. And then also I wanted to remind you, the big Spring Jubilee coming up next week, May the 15th through the 19th. You want to be sure and join us. It's going to be a wonderful week. And then another reminder as well, if you're uh, in the Columbus, Ohio area and you're watching this program on Sunday, be sure to join Calvin Ray over at the Hayden Enterprise Baptist Church this evening at at 6 o'clock at uh, Hayden Enterprise Baptist Church there in Hilliard, Ohio. And then on Tuesday night down at Monclo, a free Will Baptist Church with Joe Lane down in Sharpless, West Virginia. It's going to be a wonderful week this week. We are getting ready and geared up for the Big Spring Jubilee. And make sure you tune in next week because we have very, something very special as we enter into one of the greatest weeks of all for this ministry. May God bless you and thank you so much for tuning in today. Until next week at the same time over the same station, may God bless you and yours is our prayer. Evangelistic Outreach Ministries presents the 21st edition of the Spring Jubilee, May 15th through the 19th at the Scioto County Fairgrounds in Lucasville, Ohio. Host evangelist Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Pear will welcome the McCameys on Monday. Tuesday is Patriotic Night with Karen Peck in New River. The Primitives on Wednesday. Mike Blanton and Evidence on Thursday. And a special Youth Night with CT and Becky Townsend on Friday. Service time is 7 p.m. For more information, call 800-767-8713 or visit CalvinEvans.org. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.